Good morning, everyone. We are here to answer the burning question that shows up in my comments, that shows up in my streams, that haunt me for the past yeah, two days. It's not that long. But it is, regardless, a question that people do want an answer to. And please bear in mind that this is my opinion. It's, you know, you can do whatever you want with your game at the end of the day. And if you decide that you need something more than another, make that choice. I'm just here to point out the facts, as it may, based on my usage. So, what question are we answering today, do you ask? We are answering, should I buy the goddess Space Millum, as soon as I can find her, there she is, do we buy the goddess Space Millum, or do we buy um, Tiny Little Fairy Romerus? I really should have had this ready. That is my fault. Yes, do we... Can I, can I hold on to her? No, I can't. Okay. Do we buy Romerus? Which demon lord do you choose with your hard-earned 100 octogram emblems? Now, as you obviously saw, I purchased Milim. Why did I purchase Milim? Um, a few reasons. Most of which is I like Milim. And at the end of the day, that's probably who you should go with, is who do you like more? Who... Do you like Romerus as a character? Yes? Cool. Choose her. Do you like Milim as a character? Yes? Cool. Choose her. That would be my number one, because this game, like any other gacha game, is a collection game. Can you fight stuff? Totes. Are you summoning for different units who have different skins, are the same unit over and over and over again? Yes? Okay, my cat is deciding to play now at midnight. Um, what was I talking about? God, it's late. Right. Okay. Anyways, starting over. Romerus or Melum? Who do you want? Who do you choose? Who do you like? What do they do? I think it should be where we would start. So, if we compare their stats at maximum 6 star, which, you know, is not feasible for anybody in this game because you are given I think you have enough for 130 emblems and you need 100 to buy either of these units so no matter what you are stuck at level 80 with no stars and no boost to their alts no boost to their uh, their troop skill this is their bare minimum stats but to compare we're going to look at their maximum numbers in green, in the parentheses. So if we look at Romerus, she is a wind magic unit. She, her, her alt is an AOE, 270% normal damage. That's pretty high for an AOE. I think my five star Benny Mario is 250. Actually, I think my six star Benny Mario is 250. So. She's got another 20% extra damage on top because she's a Demon Lord character from this shop, which is fair. They deserve to be, you know, stat higher because it takes so freaking long to get them. So her HP at maximum is 8,139. If you compare to Space Millum, she is only at 7912. So you're over 200 points higher HP on Romerus, which, you know, is a decent amount. Her attack, 3188 versus 3502. Now, there's a there's a very good reason why her attack stat is f oof, like 400 points lower. Because Milam is... DPS. Her entire kit is centered around killing things. Romerus is not, and we'll go over her kit in a second. Uh, but her attack being, you know, pretty low means that she focuses on a different role. She is she is not meant to deal damage. 
if you're looking for a wind unit that does damage, Ramars is not going to be it. Sure, her ult is strong at max. Hakuro is a single target. Valentine's single target. Valdora's single target wind. I mean, you have deep, you have single target DPSs on wind. Whether or not you summon for them is an entirely different matter. But she is not going to bring heavy hitting DPS to your team. She's not meant to do that. Moving on. Her defense, 3628 versus 3106. So you see, we have, we have pretty much flip-flopped attack and defense right there. Which is fine. Milim is meant to kill, and Ramers is meant to live. So the 500 points of defense, 400 points of defense, forgivable. Right? Five, six, six, five hundred points. I can't do math. What am I talking about? Okay. So, Ramers' skills. All target when magic. Cool. Heals all allies by 55% of their max HP. Now, already, that is the single highest healing skill in this game right now. I believe a maxed out trainee does 30%. Water Rimuru, uh, both types, the 4-star and the 5-star, they do 16%. Um, Valentine does 25%. Significantly higher healing is coming from Romarus. And this is why her attack stat is not high. She is meant to keep you alive for as long as possible. <laughs> of course, I'm pretty sure this is going to cost like 55 points at level 10, so it's not cheap. Let's, let's just put that out there. It, it 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 ain't cheap, but it will heal you a crap ton. Okay, moving on. Her second skill increases all allies' wind attack by five percent for one turn, and I believe it goes up to ten. So going along with the wind meta of them buffing up, you know, skills by five percent, five percent, five percent. It's not limited to green skills here, which is good because I think if they did that. It would have made her significantly worse. This is just a straight up attack buff by 5% for any wind skill, whether it be, you know, an orange, a green, a blue, or an ult. It's you get 5% extra damage and 10 when it's maxed out. I mean, that is pretty good. She is a support unit through and through. She keeps you alive, she buffs your damage. Do you need that on your wind team? Do you have single target? Do you have a, a really good Hakuro? Do you have a really good Valentine? Do you have a really good Veldora? Do you have what you need to kill things? Will this Romarus keep you alive longer? If the answers are yes, maybe pick up Romarus. It's easy as that. <laughs> Moving on to Space Melum, a unit that I have used extensively over the past day. One day, one singular day, because that's how long she's been out. She came out 24 hours, well, 20, 26 hours ago, give or take. So I have used her a lot. I have recorded a lot of videos. I, I know what her damage cap is if she is fully freaking buffed. If you haven't watched that video, please go watch it. It's nutty. So I chose Millum. Why did I choose Millum? I, we went over that. I like Millum. I'm a Millum main. I have a team full of Millums. We just got done summoning for new Kimono Fire Millum. Go watch that stream as well. Anyways, the space meta has not come yet. I thought that with the drop of, you know, with the ability to purchase space Millum, that the next meta would be space, and it's not. It's fire, which means that she already has a slight advantage over Romarus, because Romarus came today the wind meta is effectively over the only thing left is the hero's jubilee that goes on till next week so you have a week for romarus to really really assist you in hero's jubilee and then she just becomes a really good healer which don't get me wrong is very useful everyone loves throwing trainee on their back line just because of her 30 percent heal whether or not she falls under the leader skill whether or not she has type disadvantage, if she can keep you alive, she's worth being on the team. And this is just a better trainee at that point after the wind meta is over. So, 
Milam, we don't know when the space meta is going to come. It could be February. It could be March. It could be freaking June. Who knows? But she is ahead of her meta, which means that you can prep in advance. If you have, you know, Charybdis and Space Rimuru, you have the markings of a good team. You have a really good space leader. You have a really good space support. And if you're just missing some DPS, this Milim will bring the DPS to your team. I guarantee it. 100% she will do damage even at level 80. I mean... Charybdis leads wind and space. Who is on the Wind and Space team? You have Space Rimuru, who buffs damage by 40%. You have Wind Milim, who buffs ultimate damage by 70%. You have this Milim, who buffs herself. Her She buffs her crit rate, and her she debuffs the enemy crit, 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 guard, guard power. And she buffs her own pierce power. Now, a lot of people we're not aware you can crit and you can pierce on the same attack and it will do you know the multiplied damage from both of those uh both of those effects so you can stack both of these powers and they will do exponential damage so like i said she is meant to kill things she's not meant to stay alive she's meant to kill things before you die if you have a very solidly built space team and you have Windmillum and you have Space Rimuru and you have Ranga and you have Hakuro and you have Valentine, your team is already pretty good. Your team can beat most events. Do you need Space Millum at that point? Eh, not not really. We don't know when the space meta is coming again, like I said. So we don't know what other units are going to drop. In the meantime, we don't know what, you know, when the when the space meta does come, we don't know what the first unit's going to be. It could be a unit, and if it's, you know, four months down the line, power creep is a thing in gacha games. Every new unit should be stronger than the last. And with space Millum dropping, you know, so early, at some point she will be outclassed by a normal sum summonable unit. So at that point, did you just... Did I just waste my Octogram Emblems buying Melon? Maybe. We will see. I hope I don't regret my decision. But I really, I, I personally, I don't, because I like, I, I just like Melon. I was going to buy her anyways, and nothing you could say was going to stop me. However, looking at these two units in a vacuum, it's going to sound like the cheap way out, but... Who do you need more? Who does your team, who does your box need more? Does your box need solid DPS or does your box need a healer? Do you have trainee? Do you have Valentine? No? Maybe you should pick up Romarus because she can help you outside of wind events. She can stay on your back line and if you need a real big heal on some hard conquest event, bring her up, save up those skill points, heal 50% of your health, and then get her back out. And that's it. That's, it's, it's easy as that. She can be good on literally any team. Because of what she does for that team. Which is keep you alive. Milam, on the other hand. Is very, very, very good. On a specific team. On the space and wind team. Where they have so many people that can buff your damage and make her look positively insane. Do you need that team? Do you need that much DPS? Can you even run that team? Can you run her optimal team where you can buff her and then nuke the target for like half of their health bar? Do you need it? No, you don't. You kill things just fine with a dark team because they pushed that the first month and everyone used their crystals on the dark meta and you have Dragon Milim already and you have Veldora who buffs alts anyway. No, then I don't think you need Milam. So I they are she is good in her own way, but she is not a unit you can throw on any team and get one hundred percent usage out of her. 
She needs to be under the space leader for that extra damage buff. She needs to be with someone who can buff her power. Because by herself, at level 80, she doesn't hit that hard. It's only when you start applying all those buffs to her that you really start seeing the damage potential. So, Romerus is good on any team for a healer. Milim is good on the space team as DPS. The wind meta is over. The space meta has yet to come. Do you need more space units? Do you need more wind units? That is for you to decide. Um, but I can tell you right now, based on my usage, I'm glad I bought Milim. Because I have a really good space team, and I can use the team that buffs her all to hell. Would I like a really good healer like Romerus? Sure. Do I need her? Not really. I have Trainee. I'm at level 92 now. Thanks, thanks game for giving me trainees all over the place. I have both Water Rimuru's. I have Valentine. I have plenty of healers. And the Wind and Space team with Milim, I can put Valentine on. 25% heal and she orb changes. I mean, that works fine. And she falls under Cryptus's leader skill. I have no complaints with that. I have a healer. So, in the end of the at the end of the day, it falls to your playstyle and who you like best. And I that is probably the most black and white I can put it out to you. I know it sounds like I'm just standing on Milam because I've used her and because I like her and you know, I might be a little biased in that aspect. But I do see the usage of Romerus everywhere. Okay? Not not just on Conquest, not just in whatever grindy event that they drop with the meta, not just Crucible. You can use her heal anywhere, and it will help you. It will help you win games. It will help you start clearing missions with three stars because no one dies, because you just healed 50% of their health, minimum. 55% minimum. Okay? You can use her anywhere. Millim, you can't. Limited use, overall heals. Take your pick. However, there is a third option to you, which I'm sure most people know, is that there are eight demon lords. That's why it's called Octogram. And we have two. And it costs a lot of currency to buy one. So, your third option is to wait. And there's nothing wrong with that. If you don't want Milim, and you don't want Romerus, then hold on. You don't have to buy them now. We will get a Demon Lord, I mean, I want to say every month, probably. I don't, don't quote me on that. I mean, they drop both of them at the same time, like a day apart. But, you know, the game's been open for two months, and we have two. It stands to reason now that they've got this established, and they've got the currency established, that they now have the ability to put one every month or so. And so you could just wait. And if you like another Demon Lord better, if you want to wait for Dino, if you want to wait for Gee Crimson, if you want to wait for, you know, the Demon, ver the Demon Lord version of Valentine, that is totally in your option, because all of them are going to be different typings. All of them are going to do different things. And if you spend your octograms now, and then when your favorite character comes out, and they are broken, and you, you're sitting there with 50 crystals, and, or 50 engrams, and you can't buy them, you're going to not enjoy yourself. You're not going to enjoy it. And the unit that you want, you can't get. And no one wants to feel like that. So if, you, if your space team is good, if your wind team is good, if you already have healers, if you already have DPS, wait. Hold on to your hold on to your engrams. Wait for something better, because they will get better than these two. That's just how gotcha games work. That's just power creep, plain and simple. They cannot leave demon lords at the same power level six months down the line because no one's going to want them. The game will not progress. So, I honestly, in okay, so. I bought Milim because I wanted Milim. I know people who bought Romerus because they want Romerus. Personally, if you don't need them, I think you should save. 
at that is that is my recommendation to you if you don't need them keep saving and then you know when they when you have 200 engrams available and your favorite unit drops you can buy one and you can buy someone else or you can keep saving for the next one i think that is probably the safer option until the space meta comes we don't know what other units are going to drop the wind meta is already over there's a small point of buying her you know for the healing aspect but it carries over millum's dps carries over both of these units have carry over functionality it's just do you need that functionality if not wait easy as that but that's it for me let me know in the comments what you guys think and yeah just have fun with the game do what you want to do at the end of the day take it easy everyone and i'll see you later